In Romans chapter 1 and verses 23 through 28, it describes how man gets to a place where God doesn't matter to him. It describes how a man gets to a place where all that matters is himself and his favorite sins. A man can get so far into sin that he hates anything good, hates Christians, the Bible, and he would kill God himself if he could. Man would get rid of the God of the Bible completely if it were possible. That is why you have movies and TV shows where they portray God as dead or on vacation or retired or not caring about his creation. They want a world without God so they can do what they want without anyone to answer to. But men do some things that make them go deeper and deeper into sin. And one of them is they make God an image. Romans 1.23 says, And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. And this is backwards from what evolutionists would have you to believe. It starts with man and goes down to creeping things in verse 23. Instead of starting with a tadpole and turning into a man. Just like how the Bible has the big bang at the end. But the evolutionists have it at the beginning. They always have it backwards. That's because Satan likes things backwards. And that is where you get things like back masking. But notice it says they change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image. And Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4 says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. God plainly tells us in the scriptures not to make an image. Men who forget God and place an image before God will end up deep into sin. It says they change God into an image like to corruptible man, birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. So they worship nature. These nature worshippers in the Old Testament are said to worship under every green tree. The Bible has a lot to say about nature worship. It talks about men in the Old Testament who worship idols in a grove. Ever notice how when men start worshipping things other than God, they ended up sacrificing their children, doing witchcraft, and provoking the Lord to anger? You see how you can get deep into sin? By doing this, people who worship themselves in the times we are living in are obsessed with their image. A celebrity or Hollywood person is worried about ruining his image because he doesn't want to lose worship from his fans. Ever seen people constantly taking pictures of themselves after they just had a good workout? So they take gym selfies. They are trying to make you impressed with their image. They worship their own bodies. There are people who spend more time thinking about their muscles and waist and six-pack than they do about the Bible. So they probably wouldn't like 1 Timothy 4.8 which says bodily exercise profiteth little. But Romans 1.23 says, And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Ever notice many false gods are not just men but also animals, are mixtures of four-footed beasts and creeping things? They change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. And people still do that now. Men worship sleazy whores like Beyonce and even cut theirself for her like a bunch of bell worshippers. The verse says they change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like two birds. So Horus, the god Horus, has the head of a falcon. And then you have four-footed beasts, so Bap Baphomet has the head of a goat. And then you have creeping things, so the Mayans worship Cuckoo Khan, the same false deity that Pope Francis shacked up with for a while. So man likes to make up his own image. But the image of God is the Lord Jesus Christ, as it says in Hebrews 1.3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And Jesus Christ isn't a corruptible man, he is the God-man. 
But the next reason men get deep into sin is because they change the truth of God into a lie. Romans 1, 24 and 25 says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves and change the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Just like Satan changed the truth of God into a lie in Genesis 3 and then changed the words of God when he was tempting Jesus Christ. That is changing the truth of God into a lie. We know who is behind any changing of the scriptures. The Bible talks about adding and subtracting to the words of God in Proverbs 30 and verse 6 and Revelation 22, 19. And men who don't believe what God say, says, they add to the words, subtract from his words, and lie about his words. When men say God doesn't exist, they are lying because the words of God say he does exist. Romans 1.24 says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Men who change the truth of God into a lie and do whatever they want to do will end up in deep sin, such as dishonoring their own bodies between themselves. When you commit fornication with someone else, you aren't just dishonoring them and their body, you're sinning against your own body. 1 Corinthians 6.18 says, Flee fornication, every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Men want to turn the truth of God into a lie because of the lust of their own hearts. The Bible goes against the lusts of our flesh. Romans 1.25 says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Men are liars, as it says in Romans 3.4. But in Titus 1.2 it says, God can't lie. So I'm going to believe God over any man. But men will worship and serve the creature more than the creator. It's stupid that men worship men. But there is a higher power that created the man that they're giving worship to. The creatures that men worship are like less than little ants compared to God. It's like when you are mowing the yard and you see an ant hill. It's easy just to run it over and kill all the ants. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ will do at the second advent. And God could strike everyone dead on the planet if he wanted to. But still men worship the creature instead of the creator. The next reason men get deep into sin is because they don't want to follow the plan or order that God has laid out. Romans 1 26 and 27 says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even... Their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Notice it says, even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. They don't want to follow the plan or order that God has laid out. And verse 27 says, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense. Or payment of their error which was meat. These pervs who want to make out and fornicate with people of the same sex. Are going against what God said in his book. God created a man and a woman. He didn't create a man for a man. And these same sodomites will change the truth of God into a lie. And say things like David and Jonathan had a homosexual relationship. Or they will say God is okay with men getting with men as long it is, as it is a monogamous relationship. So they change the truth of God into a lie. They aren't just doing something unnatural. They're going against nature. They don't like God's plan and order. They burn in their lusts one toward another. They are unclean because they have put their mind on the unclean. When you sit around and look at nudie magazines, soap operas, The View, 
Teen Mom, Dancing with the Stars, Pretty Little Liars, The Kardashians, and you're raised up on sodomite-loving Disney Channel, then your mind gets full of unclean filth. If you keep going in this direction without wanting God in your knowledge, then you will end up burning in lust. If you read the Bible and fill your head and heart with the words of God, then you will be like Jeremiah, who says in Jeremiah 20 and verse 9, But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. These men who are burning in their lust and not wanting to retain God in their knowledge will eventually be thrown into a place where they are literally burning in a lake of fire. Your sins aren't worth rejecting Jesus Christ over. And verse 26 says he gave them up to vile affections. If someone has vile affections, then they are loving something that is filthy. When a man goes against nature and gets with another man, and when a woman gets with another woman, they are doing that which is unseemly. Verse 27 even calls it an error. Unseemly is like not fit or indecent. The natural use is man with woman, but men want to change the natural use that God planned to the unnatural. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11 through 11 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the, of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. Notice the word effeminate in 1 Corinthians 6, 9. That would be the sodomite. And then notice in 1 Corinthians 6, 11 it says, And such were some of you. Showing that sodomites and lesbians can be saved. If you are a sex pervert, you can still come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner you are and believe on him and go to heaven when you die. If you say that a sodomite can't be saved, then you're adding works to salvation. You're saying a man has to be straight to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to save him. But you can't fix a man up until he gets saved. First get saved, then God will help you with your sinful lifestyle. But men end up in a mess because they don't like the order and plan that God has laid out for man. And the next reason men get deep into sin is because they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. Romans 1.28 says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. People hate God. People don't want to retain God in their knowledge because they hate the King James Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do you think shows like Family Guy, Saturday Night Live, American Dad, The Simpsons, Big Bang Theory, The View... And others all blaspheme Jesus Christ and make fun of the Bible. They don't want to hear a preacher preach to them. And if a preacher is preaching on the street, they give him the middle finger or cuss him. This is because they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. They don't want God in their knowledge because it reminds them of their sin. And they want to feel good about their self. Just carrying the Bible to work you will get a weird look from people. I was reading the Bible on break and a woman apologized for cussing in front of me while I was reading the Bible. The Bible reminds people that they are sinners just by looking at it. Many will use the term reprobate and say a certain person or people are reprobates and can't be saved. But notice it says as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. A man who doesn't want God in his knowledge won't even desire to get forgiveness for his sins. He loves his sins. But if a sodomite realizes his guilt of sin, 
wants to be saved and will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then he can be saved. So men make a God in their image. They change what God said into a lie. They don't give glory to God or want to retain God in their knowledge. And this leads to the sins in verses 29 through 32. It says, Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, or not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So look back at Romans 1.29, it says, Being filled with all unrighteousness. And one of the definitions for sin in the Bible is all unrighteousness. 1 John 5.17 says, All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. So these people are worthy of death because they are filled with sin. They sleep, eat, and breathe sin. Their conversation is sinful. They are filled with sexual sins. Romans 1.29 being filled with all unrighteousness. Fornication. When you commit fornication you sin against your own body. As it said in 1 Corinthians 6.18. Fornication is a very serious thing that people commit with each other just like it is shaking someone's hand. They have no idea that. When they commit fornication with someone, they are joining their body to someone else's body. 1 Corinthians 6.16 says, What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. When you join flesh with some nasty slob you met at a bar, then you are joining flesh with that nasty slob. And this makes you physically married. Sexual sins are so strong that you can give yourself over to them. It is one of those sins that get a hold of you and it is hard for you to get victory over it. Jude 1.7 says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Christians committing fornication can lead to God turning them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, like the man was turned over in 1 Corinthians 5. Fornication is all sexual sins with someone you aren't married to. And 1 Thessalonians 4.3 says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Ephesians 5.3, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. 1 Corinthians 7.2, Nevertheless, to avoid, avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. 1 Corinthians 10.8, Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Not only are they filled with all unrighteousness and fornication, they are filled with wickedness. And this is any immoral or ungodly actions. In Noah's time, the Bible says the world was wicked. Genesis 6, 5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. If it was wicked in Noah's time, and it's definitely, definitely wicked now. The wickedness is what caused God to bring the flood. So what people are doing today is provoking the Lord to anger. But what else does the verse say? It mentions covetousness. Did you know covetousness is idolatry? According to Colossians 3.5 And thou shalt not covet is one of the Ten Commandments. Men have always coveted their neighbor's wife and greatly desired something that wasn't theirs. And this is only enhanced in the days we are living in through social media and television. 
men want what they don't have and what they shouldn't have because their eyes are never satisfied. So Romans 1.29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness. They are malicious. They are angry and want to hurt and injure others without reason or just for personal satisfaction or revenge. You can, you can definitely expect this from a generation who grew up playing Grand Theft Auto and Gears of War and Call of Duty. But Romans 1.29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy. They are full of envy. They are full of dislike towards someone who has something that they want for themselves. This is one of the reasons men talk bad about others is because they have something that they want. The next one is murder. We are living in a time when murder is everywhere. You constantly hear of someone shooting up a mall or a theater. Murder is in the music. There is a record label called Murder Inc. Marilyn Manson recently made a video that depicts Donald Trump as being murdered with his head cut off. Murder is in the video games. Like I mentioned earlier, Grand Theft Auto, it is in the movies. There is so much murder that the ID channel can make multiple TV shows with multiple seasons that talk about different murders that took place. The Bible says, whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. The next sin is debate. Even you men who don't like to get into arguments with others will still argue with God. The next sin is deceit. Have you ever told a lie? You can tell a lie without even opening your mouth. You can tell a lie by nodding your head yes or no. You can tell a lie by making a certain facial expression, expression that led someone to believe something that wasn't true. Lying is made pretty today. And that's why they have shows like Pretty Little Liars. You know we are in perilous times when people find it entertaining to watch God's commandments being broken. The next sin is malignity. That is extreme enmity or bad dispositions towards someone else. Do you know or do you have a bad attitude towards other people and treat them like you would treat your enemies the next sin is whispers this is gossipers ever walked into a room where someone was whispering and you find out what they are gossiping about and join in by going along with what they're saying and then you end up doing the next sin in the verse backbiting talking bad about someone behind their back what about haters of god you have people today who hate god so much they would kill God if it were possible. That is why shows like Wonder Chosen have commit, have God committing suicide on one of the episodes. You can't serve the sinful things of this world and God at the same time. If you want to serve sin, then you will hate God because he is against those sins in his book. Rappers are always talking about people being haters but if they knew the character of God, they would hate God just as much as any sodomite hates God. What about being despiteful? This is showing contempt to someone and turning up your nose at them. Proverbs 13.13 13 says, Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. This is what people do to God and his word. But what about being proud? We have all been proud of ourselves at some time in our life. And that is why you want to go and brag about something you did to someone else. That is when you commit the next sin listed which is boasting. Ever met someone who was always bragging about themselves? They have no idea how dumb they are making themselves look. God is the only one that can brag about himself and it not be a sin. Just as he does in Isaiah 44, 8, where he says, Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. God brags about himself, and we should brag about him, not ourself. 
What about inventing something evil? The verse in Romans said, Inventors of evil things. In terms of religion, you have people like Joseph Smith who created the Mormon cult. You have the people at CERN who made that big machine. And they're obviously up to no good. People who invent evil things end up leading a bunch of others down the wrong path with them. I'd rather be Charles Manson at the Great White Throne Judgment than someone like Joseph Smith. What about the next one? Being disobedient to parents. Everyone has committed this sin. If you don't believe this is happening every day, just go to the grocery store and you will hear parents yelling at their kids and their kids yelling back at their parents. In Romans 1, it also says that being without understanding is a sin. In 1 Corinthians 2, 13 and 14 says, Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. If a man doesn't understand the Bible, then he isn't comparing Scripture with Scripture as he is commanded, or he isn't spending his time in prayer and Bible reading to understand the Scripture. Everyone has committed the sin of being without understanding, because no one understands all of the Bible. If a Christian doesn't understand the Bible, then he is giving the natural man the preeminent place. And what about covenant breakers? There are many married couples who break their vows. And if you don't tell someone you're going to do something, or I mean, you, you tell your, someone you're going to do something, and then you don't do it. You're a covenant breaker. You, then you have the sin of being without natural affection. That is the affection a woman shows to her unborn baby that she wants to kill while it is still inside of her. That is the affection a man gives to another man when they are fruity for each other. It is the same as the vile affections that we discussed earlier. What about implacable? Are you so unforgiving that you won't forgive anyone even if they apologize to you? Do you just sit around and pout and stay angry at someone? The definition of implacable is not to be appeased, that cannot be pacified and rendered peaceable, stubborn or constant in, in enmity. And finally, if you are unmerciful, then you are refu refusing to treat others the way God has treated you. God has shown you mercy by not putting you in hell and by dying on the cross to pay for your sins. Some people show no mercy to others. They refuse to treat others like they want to be treated. And the definition of unmerciful is not merciful, cruel, inhumans to such beings as are in one's power, not disposed to spare or forgive. And then Romans 1.32 says, Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So not only are the people who commit these sins worthy of death, the people who have pleasure in them are also worthy of death. A good way to get deeper into sin is by watching others sin and taking pleasure in it. The best way to stay away from sin is to first of all get saved if you're not saved. Then get a King James Bible, read it, study it, and mark it up every day. Stay in constant prayer and fellowship with God. Replace old wicked habits with new clean habits. When you want to sin, quickly go to God in prayer. Quit walking in the flesh and walk in the spirit. The way to do this is when you have the desire to sin, start doing something spiritual. Plead the blood, listen to preaching, 
put on a gospel song, call a Christian friend to talk, do something spiritual instead of thinking about the sin. But this has been Romans chapter 1, 23 through 32 about how to get deeper into sin.